Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are back for some more Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. So, as I've mentioned in the past two episodes, the sound might still be a little bit off. I'm trying a very temporary setup here with a, a cardboard box covered with a blanket to see if I can minimize the echo. Well, at least until I have everything properly set up, so I do apologize for that once again. Um, with that out of the way, we're going to continue our adventure. In the previous episode, we were in the Hall of Warriors, where we had a little bit of a fight with the Three Tusk clan leader. We had to kill him, Mr. Simok. He did deal a bunch of damage, though, being a barbarian with the Heart of Fury skill. I actually, now that I mention it, I forgot to check <laughs> what that skill precisely does, but I got the feeling that every time he got hit, he was retaliating in an AoE. Um, so I think the next place I want to go to is over here, the Blood Sands. Because if you guys remember, part of the quest that we had, the Sacrificial Bloodlines where we actually killed Simok, we didn't actually go into the Blood Sands, but he had asked us, yeah, to take the child to Keeper Wurda in Blood Sands. So this was actually my, you know, my cue to go and investigate this area. Uh, since we didn't do it on that quest, I'm gonna go there now, after this cutscene. You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. For every heretic we confess, for every betrayer that burns on our pyres, new sheep continue to flock to Ivara Exentios. But not you. I underestimated you in the beginning, but no longer. Ivara Exentios. You honor me, Grand Inquisitor. It is not for honor that I summoned you today, but for duty. Too many of our own have confessed upon the wheel and the rack and the flame. Too many of our faithful have had their minds poisoned by the Kratom Witch. The tide is against us now. We have but one option. Ivara's following must see her exposed for what she is. She must confess her heresy before my court. Mm, how would we reach her? Not in Kratom, surely. Their lord has embraced her heathen faith and protects her with his army. But in Osionus, things would be different. The king of Osionus is a sinful man. We have helped him to see the error of his ways, and now he fears for his soul. He would pay any price for absolution. Hmm. Okay. But how would we get Iovara to move to Osionus? So this is a person. Uh, Flock to Iovara. Uh, okay. You have already done much for the Inquisition. I wouldn't ask this were there any other choice. Hmm. Interesting. We have discovered the Twin Helms for some experience. And another cutscene. These look like dryads. Sida. Two identical women seem to fade into view as they move away from the great trees that camouflage them. Their skin is tree bark, ridged and scaly, wreathed in a curling tangle of roots, buds and blooms. Their hair hangs beneath the shade of serrated leaves like the drooping branches of the elms above, and the pupils of their eyes are encircled by hundreds or even thousands of concentric rings, as if to mark the accumulated wisdom of millennia. Turn around, flesh creature. Outsiders are not permitted to approach the elms. So one of them extends a snarl of roots toward it, snakes and twists together to form something like an open hand, palm down. Do you not feel it, sister? Something familiar, an ancient soul, like the other one. Another defiler, no doubt. Mm. Let us fell him and be troubled no more. It would pay the debt of his predecessor. So once again, Theos seems to have been here before me. Hmm, so it would seem, Rhiannon. But we must not hasten to judgment. I see a different motive here. Different questions in these eyes. Good. What of it, young trespasser? 
Is it as my sister says? Or are you here to stain this place with foul deeds? I wonder if being benevolent and honest plays a role here. <laughs> I have forgotten my purpose in the presence of such legendary beauty. Come on, man. I see a man who came through here. It sounds as though you have already met him. There, by his own admission, Sheetha. Really, sister? And you wonder why your leaves begin <laughs> to fall out before midsummer? Clearly that man did not want to be followed. Whatever the relationship here, I suspect it is anything but cordial. So, good cop, bad cop? The answer is yes, old one. We crossed paths with Thales not long ago. She knows his name. And we can tell you where he went. But I find it curious that anyone would seek him out. Suspicious, even. If we are to help you find him, we would know why. Okay. He must face justice for his transgressions. I like him better now, Sheila. Good. Indeed. A kindred spirit, it seems. But that's what this is really about, isn't it? You are tied to him. I see it now. You are awakened. Your soul is awake and something once buried deep now wells to the surface. Past overwhelms present, closes in around you. Your time has nearly reached its end. Oh, please don't. I want to live. I just need to get to Theos. I am sorry to tell you this, but Theos cannot give you what you seek. Nor can any man. An awakening cannot be undone any more than your past can be undone. What's she mean? I thought Merwald said... Elot's face is rigid. This is... permanent. What? Kana glances at you. But that can't be right. Not after everything. There must be someone else we can ask. We did not come down this road together to be refused passage by a pair of talking saplings. <laughs> I love him. To be chained to such a past, her face is pale, her eyes hollow. A bitter and grievous thing, Watcher. So this has all been for nothing and I'm going to lose my mind. The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Did you truly expect to be able to wipe it away? Hmm. Something that kind of confuses me, and I'm not sure if it's just me and... You know, like I always say, my memory isn't as good as it should be. <laughs> So maybe I'm forgetting something that happened along the way, but I get the feeling that uh, the game is trying to force me to want to remove this watcher condition. Although I've, I've never actually asked to, to remove it, right? I don't think I did. Uh-huh. I didn't have a choice but to wipe it away. I'm kind of curious. Well, I'd rather have tried to put things right. Oh, okay, this isn't voiced. A noble thought, but for the lifetimes that separate you from your problems. However, as much as my sister speaks truly that there is no way back from an awakening, there may yet be a way forward. Would you agree, Shiva? I would were the way not so likely to end in death. What is it? The man Theos you must already know by now. You are linked by a common past. Something about it lingers within you, festering, unresolved. What it is I cannot see any more than you. And without that knowledge, your doom is certain. Hmm. But were you to learn the source of this discord, perhaps it could be put to rest. Though it is equally possible it will trouble you as much now as it did then, and merely speed your condition to its end. My past comes to me in pieces. How do I unlock the rest? So there is some kind of link between me and Theos, and apparently if I know what that link is, perhaps I can end this state. Hmm. You might wait for it to come on its own, of course. But when it comes, it will replace your sanity's last breath. 
such is the nature of your condition. Or you could learn it from someone who already knows. <laughs> I guess. Tayos, would you remember? It is said the gods made his memory perfect. That he may never forget his charge. If he ever knew, he still does. Okay. Not that he would tell you, of course. You have followed the right person for the wrong reason, it seems. We see it often beneath the elms. The soul driving mind and body to unknown places for unfathomable reasons. You may have wandered into Theos' path many times, in many lifetimes, without an awakening to show you why. Hmm. The only thing that's certain is you did not find what you sought. You said you know where you went. He has gone down beneath the tower to a place older than we, where the people of Engwith once walked. He makes his way to the buried city, Sun in Shadow. May he stay down there and rot with the remains of his people. He may yet. He won't be returning the way he came, that much is certain. He opened a secret path in the tower's base and saw it destroyed behind him through some vile means. Okay, is there some other way to get to him? We know of one. On the burial aisle, through the court of the penitents, Brayeth Yaman. A shortcut, in fact. Don't be cruel, sister. The way my sister speaks of is not for the faint of heart. A great pit at the center of a forgotten court, where faiths were judged in place of crimes. To most, it is simply a gateway to death. With the help of the gods, it can take you where you want to go. What do you mean with the help of the gods? The pit is said to have been a means of judgment by the gods. Those cast into it are meant to die. It is that way you must pass to reach Sun and Shadow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The court is old. We do not know much for certain. But it would seem only the gods themselves can grant passage. Okay, so we need the favor of the gods. What is this court? No more than a ruin now. It is older than we. A place for the trial of heretics. We were not here to witness it. But at one time there was a group that refused to acknowledge the gods. Neither the first nor the last, of course. But these were numerous and all put on trial for it. Those who did not repent were cast into the pit and imprisoned below. Mm. The fall killed them, of course. <laughs> the prison was not for people, but for their souls. And their sentences were eternal. It is said that many of the condemned repented and were permitted by the gods to ascend from the pit, so long as they pledged their service to one of them. But these are old legends. How would I ever get the gods to help me? Behind us is Ter Evron, said to pierce the Shroud itself, and a place of communion with all gods. If ever there was a time for prayer, you have found it. So the only way to get through this pit is to pray for help? Not the only way. Just the only <laughs> one that doesn't end with your body impaled on jagged rocks. Is there no other way? None. Hmm. And who would I pray to? Any god you can, I should think. I would pray first to those gods you like best. I hope for your sake, the feeling is shared. I mean, I'm not sure if I like any god. <laughs> They're all kind of weird. And how do I pray? Ter Evron is also called the Hall of Stars. And the stars show us the allegiances of the gods. When stars are in conjunction, we know the gods they represent are aligned as well. You should choose a place to pray where you'll be closest to those you want to hear you. If a god stands alone, you should pray to that god. If they band together, you should address them all. Choose your words wisely, for all gods expect proper homage, and none has patience for fools. Hmm. What do you wish to know? How did you know I was pursuing Theos? The same way that you are no doubt able to peer into the ether and experience the souls of others. It is something we are born with, some more, some less. A gift common to many creatures of the wilds. You share certain 
similarities with the man you pursue. For your sake, I pray they are few and of no consequence. Okay, so for now I'm just gonna say farewell. Before you go, <clears throat> tell me this, old one. I'm curious. If you were to subdue your enemy, what would you do with him? What would give you peace? Now that's an interesting question. I wish to undo the harm he's caused. What, also this one. I would like to combine number four and number five. <laughs> you would need to have twice as many lifetimes as he to repair his savage work. But perhaps there are strides you can make. All the same, think on this matter. Be assured in your course. In the end, it may mean all the difference, not just to his soul, but to yours. And be warned. Some questions have answers that can never be learned. And it is those that trouble the soul above all others. May you find an answer to yours. Hmm. Oh, and they just went away. Okay, so quest completed, the Assassin at Large, and now we have the new quest, Council of Stars. I'm just gonna wait to see if any new quest shows up. Yeah, okay, the Court of the Penitents. And what else? Let me see. So, here we have... The Court of the Penitents. The Delangan sisters of Twin Helm know that Theos has escaped into a subterranean path to an unwritten location called Sun in Shadow, blocking access behind him. The sisters reveal to me another way to reach him, perhaps even overtake him. The Burial Isle offers a path through the ruins of an ancient unwritten prison, Breath Eamon. The route is perilous, but it may be the, fast way, the fastest way to Sun in Shadow, as it involves a long <laughs> fall straight down. My elucidated memories are becoming more frequent now, barely distinguishable from the waking world. I am running out of time. Oh, okay. Okay, so this explains why we want to revert this condition, because we are going insane. I need to know what Theos remembers about the past that we shared, so that whatever it is that plagues my soul can be put to rest. Okay, the way lies in the burial isle. There is an ancient court there that can lead me to Theos. And then we also have the Council of Stars. Shida and Riowen, the Delangan of Elm's Reach, told me that Theos has destroyed the route from Ter Evron to Braith Eamon. To reach him, I will have to descend through the pit in the Burial Isle. That requires the aid of the gods. Okay, so the gods can grant me safe passage, and to ask for their favor, I'll need to pray to them in Ter Evron, where they are set to commune with mortals. Now, I'm not entirely sure if if I remember this properly. Oh, they are over here. But I think this is kind of the way to the end of the game. And that's not something that I want to do just yet, right? Because I want to I want to take care of the expansions first. So right now I'm going to leave Ter Evron unexplored. I'm going to do everything else and then I'm going to come back. At least that's my plan unless something else changes it. And right now we're going to go into Blood Sands, which is what I wanted to go at the start of the episode. So that we can explore some stuff over here. Oh, we gained an item. Oh, it was... never mind. <laughs> it was the river reed that I picked up. The Ethic Knoll welcome your presence, supplicants. So these are the evil druids that like to sacrifice people. And this is Keeper Geros. A dwarven man stands motionless near the roaring fire that lights the cavern. Your sacrifice feeds the land, supplicants. Come forth. A gust of smoke curls around him, licking the charred flesh that bulges on his forearms. They suddenly flex. Estramor. The dwarf holds his fists in a tight grip. Your kin doesn't come here to share with the tribes. What do you want? Tell me about the ethic knoll. That's who we are. The dwarf picks on his scarred forearm. His guttural sigh mingles with the crackling of wood and bones behind him. As I said, Estramorn rarely visit our halls. Our order has thrived for generations. Before we came to Twin Helms, our rites fed the lands of the eastern mountains. Now we share blood for Erlanfath. Gerost opens his palms. 
Strikes of red skin run through them like flames. To everything that must end, our sacrifices bring a new beginning. He looks up. We sustain what's to come. Tell me about the sacrifices. Geros spreads his stocky legs apart and locks his forearms. Everything must die to return a new Estramor. Through the sacrificial rites, we offer supplicants the honor of giving their most precious gift back to their brethren, back to the land. The dwarf lifts its fist, thick and mottled by red scars. The blood gives us strength. Even the clan fathers have come to depend on the blood paint. They brim with power before battle, all thanks to the sacrifices of their kin. And what's this place? The clan fathers call this place Blood Sands. We call it home. The ethic Knoll have tended the land from within this cave since before the arrival of the tribes of Twin Helms. Garros crosses his arms. Be warned, Estramor. We bleed life to nurture it. Our sacrifices may strike you as savage, but the health of these lands depends on them, and it's unseemly for guests to insult their hosts. Goodbye, sir. Remember, Estramor, you are a guest in these halls. Respect our ways and we'll tolerate your presence among us. Okay, cool. Something I want to check. I think I'm not very well liked. Uh from these guys. Yeah, I'm a troublemaker, so faintly bad. Okay. Small curls up from these charred skeletons. The smell is nauseating. Oh, there are skeletons over here. They're burning people. Wonderful. Oh, there's a named person here, Talon. There is no greater honor than dying for one's tribe. If some fall in battle, how is this different? There's, there's kind of a big difference, dude. I shall be quiet as a calm sea. I'm walking in stealth just to Which see if there's traps or something hidden. And also to steal. <laughs> I think this is kind of a big place. Eh, somewhat big. Oh, more stealing. Okay. Keeper. Ah, so this was the lady that was meant to. Um, to sacrifice a child. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Okay, you should go away because I want to steal that. Yes. Yes. Okay, shoo shoo. Go away. There you go. Okay, now we're gonna wait and let's try to steal. No. Of course. Can't do it. God damn it. Builder's wisdom to you. The elderly dwarf blinks at you, not quite looking at you. Her eyes are pale and clouded with cataracts. Welcome to Bloodsands. It is rare that an Estramor sets foot in these caverns. Her sightless eyes fix on you as she tilts her head. What brings you here, I wonder? What do you do here? I sell and maintain certain goods for the preservation of our order, and I perform some of our ritual sacrifices. Something more? How do these sacrifices work? Like any worthwhile ritual, it's too complex to explain in detail. It involves clotting the supplicant's essence, binding it to their life's blood, and drawing it into a container or a vessel. Okay, tell me about blood sands. This is the raw, bloody heart of Erglan Fath, where some come to give their essence back to their people, her dry lips bend into a sardonic grin, where others seek a noble escape from their trials. The legacy of the builders to the tribes was not merely other and stone, but a sense of community. And it is here that Glenfaddens come to sacrifice what is most precious, even their own lives, to preserve it. Okay, so just show me what you have for sale. But if you wanted to kill the child for Simok, this is where you would come. So she has flasks of war paint, which I do like. This is a really cool buff, and I might just take it. And the rest of these things are kind of whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. And we're gonna leave her for now. Blade in the dark. Because I think there might be some trouble over here. <laughs> I have a feeling. There's some earth blights, there's some keepers, enchanters. The bravest sons and daughters fall not by the swords of Estramorn, but by the daggers of their brethren. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> Greatness requires sacrifice. Yeah, huh? sure. I do not agree with sacrifices. 
There are supplicants. I think there's, there's a hidden... There. Yeah, there's a hidden wall here and, and this is the hint, right? You can see some bloody footprints walking into the wall and there we go. We found a, a secret button. Of course, trapped. No. Okay, let's 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 back up. Hey. And we're gonna send it there in. He has the most HP out of everyone. Yes. Woo, baby. Okay, some damage. Hey. It's fine. Like I said, this is why we send the guy with the most HP to do it. Ooh, more war paint. And boots of speed. Oh, that's actually interesting. Nice. There's something. Oh god! No no no! Stop! In the head. <sighs> okay. I thought he was gonna open it by mistake. Blood testament. Uh, only usable by monk, plus 2% raw damage per wound. A monk from the Abbey of the Cloven Wield mastered suffering by taxing her body to its limits each day. Such was her discipline that her sensitivity to pain and her ability to redirect it reached heights previously unknown in her order. Following her death in battle, the fellows of the Abbey gave her bloodied, uh, bloodied hand bandages a place of honor in their great hall. An unknown thief stole the bandages along with several other relics in 2802 AI. Since then, the wrappings have circulated among various monks of different orders. Okay, so a cool monk item. Did not actually read the description on the boots. Boots are worn for both comfort and style. Most often made of leather, they can be custom made to suit a variety of terrains and purposes. While soldiers and explorers often favor hardy, thick-soled boots, rogues and thieves may prefer soft-soled shoes that allow them to move nimbly and quietly. And that's exactly what I was thinking. So my guy, uh, but I do have this. Mm. Plus 10% damage to flank targets. I, I don't want to lose this. She has a plus one to constitution that does not stack. This guy has Athletics and Max Endurance, Shot in Faith. Okay, so we have some cool things. I honestly think probably it there would be the one to use them. So he can move around the battlefield a little bit better. And I will try that. So you can take this, you're gonna lose some Corrode Resistance, but I think that's, that's mostly okay, honestly. So you have those five war paint flasks. You are going to have them as well. You don't really need them. Okay, so do like this. Okay. Hey. Well, we've gotten some cool things already. We have some keepers and chanters. What else do we have? Essence within to nurture flesh and essence without to strengthen it. Some greater flame blights, some keepers and supplicants, nothing very special over here. I'm gonna keep looking for hidden passages. Oh, I want that. And I want that as well. Chanters and keeper. I think this is the final There's area. Ahead. Oh. Lockpicks, okay. This is apparently free to take, and there's a named character over here. Ah, Naka. The petitioner before you is swaddled in loose-fitting robes. Her hair is greasy and matted. A glossy film of sweat and grime coats her exposed skin. She has the swollen features of pregnancy and several missing teeth in her big, grinning smile. Ugh. As you approach, she slowly turns to you and examines you from head to toe, smiling the entire time. Joyous day to you, she says. Despite coming from a wearied body, her voice sounds resonant and relaxed. I am Naka, midwife and lore keeper. Her hands run across a slight bulge in her belly. She rolls her head back and sighs a relaxed purr. Are you feeling well? Flawless, she replies. Apologies, I must be left to my meditation. 
The right of strength is invigorating, almost overwhelming to the senses. She reaches down and cradles her belly with inner hands and turns away. Okay, it's kind of strange. Essence taken by force may sustain one, but essence given freely empowers many. Okay, so the only place we have left to explore is right here. And we might have something to do in this area, is all I'm gonna say. Margrin's fire casts light in dark places. Because I remember this area. <laughs> So I'm thinking of a way to do this that doesn't end in absolute misery for me. So I think I want mm. these four back here. This is just in case there's a fight, okay? Hey. I actually want it there in this region. I don't want him to start anything. Following your lead. Oh god. Maybe I don't have a choice. As your blood flows. So shall your essence, your life's energy shall feed the soil, and your soul's energy shall enrich the community. This is by your own choosing, supplicant. So I think they're about to perform a, a sacrificial ritual. A dwarven man stands on a raised platform. Beneath him, an elf lies prone on a stone table. As you get closer, you hear the dwarf speak in a gravelly monotone. Yes, the elf's voice is high, but even. The dwarf grips a hatchet with both hands and raises it over his head. He throws his shoulders forward and swings the weapon into the elf's chest, connecting with a meaty thump. Blood gushes around the blade and the sacrifice's screams were in the air. So I didn't have a chance to actually stop it, unfortunately. Aelot's lips curl with disgust. This is why I prefer the wand to the blade. <laughs> Despite his earlier agreement, the elf trashes atop the stone table, his torso arching while his arms and legs remain tight in place. Meanwhile, the dwarf spreads his arms wide and allows blood to spatter his robes. When the elf is finally silent and still, the dwarf pulls his hatchet from the body and wipes it on his hand. Kana makes a disgusted noise and turns away. I think I prefer these rites when they were only words upon a page. Why did I look? It's not as if I didn't expect it. Ah, okay. So we had no chance to interrupt it. Yes. But maybe we have a chance to do something about this in the future. And like I was saying, in case there's a fight, I actually want it there over here to bring in all of the other people that might come in, while Kana can just stay over there and just off tank in case it comes to that. So we're gonna send Kana to talk to Arch Druid Restin. The dwarf wears crimson robes that are stained and streaked with dark patches. His face is smooth but lacking youthful elasticity. It's as if the lines and wrinkles have been formed and erased many times over. He watches you with eyes like two black pits as he wipes his hatchet on his robes. Hail, Estramor. No one comes to Blood Sands without a purpose. What is yours? Who are you? I am the Archdruid of the Ethic Gnoll. For centuries it has been my duty to guide our rituals and guard our knowledge. It is work that requires a certain resilience, but it is not without its benefits. Mm -hmm. Rustin's eerily smooth face is motionless as he watches you. You murdered the man right here. He lowers his head. Your simplistic morals do not apply here, Estramor. Murder does not enter into it. It was a sacrifice, and one willingly entered into. The survival of all things depends on balance. Give and take. This principle lies at the heart of all power. Expending something of value releases energy. Energy that can be channeled by those who know how. He tilts his head toward you. All kith, whether or not they care to admit it, practice this. We take the yield of the land and the flesh of beasts to live. And we give our blood and sweat to propagate the things we desire. Yeah, so... Um, I was kind of thinking about going with the That Sounds Brutal to see, you know, what else he has to say. But in case that does not end in a fight, I don't actually want to risk it. 
and I simply will not let you continue these vile sacrifices. I don't want him to continue this killing of people um, while after I'm gone. So, let's fight, bitch. Your blood shall water the sands, Estramor. Yeah, we'll see about that, buddy. Okay, so, oh my god, is this a, an insect plague? I do believe this is an insect plague and I don't like it. Let me see if I can interrupt this guy. I can pull him from where I stand, which is good. Everybody's aiming it, it there, you can aim over there. I'm gonna try and blind this bitch right now. You're gonna blast him. And what do I want to do with Mr. Alot here that will allow me to, you know, survive? <laughs> so Dudens is gonna toss out his painful interdiction, as usual. Okay, Kana has a job, Eder has a job, she has a job, I have a job. Aloth does not have a job. I think I'm simply gonna use a wall of force to hobble anybody wanting to come into the back line over here. So something like this. And let's hope I can stun this guy with my rogue. Let's slow time down. Okay, okay, okay. Good pull, good pull, awesome pull. Let's try and knock him down right now. She's blasting. Everything seems fine. This guy is summoning blights, I think. Oh, very good. Near death already. Okay, so she's gonna back up. Okay, very good. Excuse me, what? I think I think one of these cast a petrification on top of Kana and accidentally petrified <laughs> petrified the archdruid as well. Oh my god, man! Let me see. Let me see who did this. Um. So Kana, okay, engagement in melee into the fray. Keeper casts Embrace the Earth Talon. I'm not sure what that is. Pa -pa -pa. Durance Interdiction. Yes, yes. Chant. Grazes. There's a Chanter around here somewhere. Nice 57 damage from my, my friend over here. So, Knockdown critted the Keeper. Good. Wall of Force, Wall of Force. I think it was this one, right? Embrace the Hurt Talon. Grazes Archdruid. Grazes Kana. Yes, yeah, so that, that's what happened. So, Embrace the Hurt Talon petrified everybody over there. That's a cool spell then. Okay, so the Supplicant is dead. Okay, so these Supplicants are whatever. They just kill over and die. Now... Petrified for 7 seconds is not something I appreciate, but I can't really free him. I mean, maybe I can, I have freedom of movement. Immunity to paralyze and petrified for 27 seconds, what's the range? 5 meter range, so I would have to get up close, ugh. Not sure I like it. Let's, let's see if I can do this. So over here it would reach. And the radius is 4.47 meters. So something like that should hit. Okay, so now Aloth is casting this thing. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bash them right now. Actually buff and then bash. The grieving mother, what is she gonna do? I think I, I think I'm gonna use her to to kill this earth blight as quickly as possible. And I'm gonna try and use myself to kill the Archdruid while he's petrified, although it only lasts for 3.5 seconds. Okay, let, let's see if I can make this work here. That one died. Okay... Okay, a good shot. 51 Pierce. He's still petrified. Kana... Okay, Kana is now free. Good. So I can walk back with Durance. This is looking fine, honestly. Chanter, Chanter. Let's toss some books over here for raw damage. And then just nuke this one. 
And I have to kill this guy. I think this guy is the danger here. That's just a chanter, this guy is a druid. And the arch druid is also a concern. Okay, so let's, let's actually back up with you. Let's kill these quickly. Durance is coming back. Okay. This is stunned for 9.5 seconds. Earth Blights, I believe, are immune to piercing? Whoops. No, they are not, so shoot him. And you can shoot as well. What is this debuff here? Ah, okay, so it's a chant of chant. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's buff up. Okay, this guy is coming in. So I'm gonna start working on him. She's gonna start working on him. Uh, let me see if I can pull this guy into the fray. <laughs> okay, good. Try and knock him down. Or actually I can even do a clear out. And I'm also gonna get a Holy Radiance. Seems fine to me. You are just shooting people. Okay, cleared out, you got knocked back. I have dominated that one, something I didn't want to do, but okay. He's prone for four seconds. Kana is fine. How bad? Good shot. Uh, 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 kill the chanter, please. Durant, what do I want you to do? I would like to cast this over there if I can. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Where are you going, my friend? Just put this on the floor, please. Like, over here. <laughs> okay. So, I've killed the druid. Let's kill the chanter. Like, this one, probably. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of blights over there. Oh, God. Where are you aiming that insect plague? At me? I'm very far away, dude. Can you even hit that far? Okay. Let's, let's go back here. You need to engage with that one. Okay. Oh my god, some of these effects are killing frames. Yo, what's even happening right now? Oh my god, man. Excuse me? Sunlands? Oh, he cast a Sunlands? He was casting something else entirely. Jesus Christ, man. The game is frying up right now. You should be doing what I told you to do, which is stun that guy. Okay, frames are back. <laughs> Let's kill this quickly, please. Okay, so Durance is back in the fight. I want to try a Sacre Bleu. See if I can stun that bitch, that the Arch Druid over there. Uh, I'm fine. Okay, stunned, work on him, you are killing this one, you are killing that one. Okay, Sacre Bleu hit, okay, good, very good. You can toss out an um, Iconic Projection on top of the Arch Druid, I think he's gonna fall relatively quickly. Okay, so you are working on that one, let's, yeah, let's Your shoot thoughts. that one. As well. Okay, that one's down. Earth Blight is badly injured. Another iconic projection because why not? Blam! We have 86 focus points. I'm thinking. I'm thinking just Silent Scream on the Arch Druid. That's probably the best way to go. Oh my god, there's friends coming in. Yeah, there are friends coming in. Uh, there, go over there. Are you targeting me? Yes, you are, bitch. Let's try and escape to lose target. Shoot this one. Durant is fine. Please escape! God damn it. Oh, oh my god! Okay, that was a loud scream. Sorry. Um, I need to do something about this. Yes, I do. Okay, let's wall of force this. If they come in, they're gonna suffer. Oh my lord, man. so many effects. Okay, 
Okay, so Aloth is fine. Let's actually buff him up because I will need some DPS over here. Or maybe honestly just just chill fog this area. Okay, I need to move away. Nine seconds prone. Ugh. Okay, let's see if I can finish off the, the stupid arch druid. We are mostly fine. The Arch Druid is dead and so are his summons. The Flame Blight is annoying, but not really what I'm looking to maybe take care of right now, or maybe I am. I do need to get up. Okay, so we have the Chill Fog. Oh my god, this guy is casting Insect Plague back up. You gotta back up. We are killing this. Kill that at least. Come on, Aloth, you can do it. Okay, go there. Okay, so it there is tanking just fine. I'm back up. Let's finish that one off, please. There's a lot of screaming coming out from the chanters. Do you want to die or not? Oh my god. Okay. Okay, I see how this is. Let's heal my friends over here. This guy is still not... Oh, okay, finally he's dead. Okay, a there, tank, please. I'm gonna toss out an amplified wave on a there. See if I can knock some people down. Okay, we are healed. So you are gonna give us devotions for the faithful. For some extra might. The grieving mother is petrified, but only for 3.1 seconds, so that is mostly fine. Okay, who do I want to focus on? This guy is badly injured, but he is a flame blight, so let's work on the keeper over there. Okay. Are they buffed up? They are not buffed up. So maybe a Shining Beacon over here might be good. Can you finish this off, please? Okay, so he's back up. I am gonna buff after all. And then start shooting. The Grieving Mother is back with us. Let's get a Phantom Foes on top of everyone. We're also gonna get some Ogres to help kill this Flame Blight. Why didn't you buff with what I said? Do what I said, please. And then shoot. You are focusing on this keeper. That's what I need. Durance is right in the middle, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. I could go for this. Despondent blows. No, just some extra defenses on everybody. Okay, let's kill that. Phantom Foes has gone out. Good. The Keeper is injured. Back up. Okay, now we have AoE. Let's start killing. Flame Blight is finally down. Kana can move in as well. You can back up. Okay. Work on that one. Work on that one. You can go over here after all. You are fine. You can actually terrify people. And then continue shooting. Yes. Okay, you are looking at that one. Okay, they should be terrified. Good. Heal up. Shoot. Man, the, the colors are going crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of effects going on right now. Okay, go kill that guy. Go kill that guy. That's it. <laughs> okay. Hey. Finally, this was a larger fight than I remembered. Hey. What? It is done, and there will no longer be any stupid sacrifices in the area anymore. 
But yeah, I'm still thankful about the choice I made. Uh, having Kana go over here and have it there pick up whatever came this way and us being in this spot I think is the best option right now. Because if we had tried to do the fight like over here, we would fight all of these near the back line and then also get flanked, which, you know, is not a great choice. Ooh, you had something purgatory. Plus 20% damage, exceptional, 20% of damage resort is endurance. Ooh, plus 0.5 to crit damage multiplier, very nice. In a monastery overlooking Coldfall Lake from the foothills of the White March, there once resided the clandestine order of monks known as the Thousand Dreams. Through a powerful form of pain-induced meditation, these monks were able to walk through their past lives as though they were dreams. Each traversed these memories in ultimate hopes of achieving complete understanding of his or her soul's identity. They believed that after experiencing 1000 lifetimes, total enlightenment could be obtained. Greatest of their sect was Ri Golan, who had an ancient soul and was said to have walked more lifetimes than any other. But when she came to end of uh, when she came to the end of all her lifetimes and found there was no more to experience, it became clear that she would never come to know herself completely, for there was simply not enough to learn from. Unable to accept this fate after endless trials, Ri Golan sought a way to take the experiences of others for her own, that she might reach 1000 lifetimes yet. She channeled her unquenchable hunger into her favorite sword, and it became an instrument of her will. With it, she claimed many lives in the surrounding area. Each drop of blood on her blade was a new experience, each killing blow a new lifetime for her to claim. When the rest of the Thousand Dreams came to learn of her actions, they banded together and confronted Rigolan upon her return to the temple. In the end, amid the courtyard of slain monks, she did indeed come to understand her soul, and it is said that among the many experiences contained in the blade are all those of Rigolan herself. The blade itself is a simple saber with a worn leather grip and an inset ebony hilt. The sword becomes hot to the touch when its wielder's foes are vanquished. That's a very large backstory for it. And quite cool as well. It would be an excellent weapon for a melee DPS. Streaks of red-brown blood and globs of tissue have worked themselves into the minute grooves of the stone. Let's check out the loot. We have some fine stuff, some primal rocks and stuff. Okay, so we have materials and, and money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can also loot everything over here, which is a bonus. I'm thinking if I want to rest, and I probably should rest, Okay, let's go over here. Can I even rest inside? I can. Okay, good. So damage reduction and... I cannot actually get um, accuracy versus kit. So I think I might just go for damage versus flanked. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need that, so just go for damage reduction and do that. <clears throat> or actually use this as well. Okay. Let's rest. Hey. And let's get a, nice at least quiet. one more fight before we end this episode. But I intend on clearing this entire cavern. Okay. Let me see if I can use you. Oh, you had this off. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let's fight, bitches. Okay, so the Keepers are the danger, they are the Druids, and I think this is the Petrification attack, so let's use a Vigorous Defense. Okay, let's go in. Maybe go in over there because this guy is looking to her. We're gonna gang up on this guy. Mm -hmm. Let's see, so he, what did he cast? He cast... Yeah, embrace the Earth Talon. Did it... What? I killed the Supplicant already? Okay, let's knock down these Druids that are casting Insect Plague. Yeah, I think he just missed everyone. 
It hit in the middle. Okay, so you're working on that guy. He still got it off. Insect swarm. Oh, but this one deals... Okay, this one is better. It's pierce damage, not raw damage. Okay. So you can go over there and stun this guy. We're gonna get some extra frames, but that's mostly okay. Okay, let's back up with you. Uh, you are actually gonna go back to off tanking because, yeah. They love aiming at me, don't they? They really do. Okay, so you aim over there. Okay, so he's, he's swapping his spell for a dot. Okay, Keeper is near death. Uh, I actually forgot my painful interdict. Did he miss? I think he missed. He hit this area. Okay. Well, Holy Radiance for some extra accuracy. Why not? Yeah, keep hitting a lot, that's fine. Uh, that's no longer fine, stop it. Turn this off. <laughs> and let me get some damage reduction on a lot. You are aiming over there. Okay, so you are fine. Let's shoot that guy. Let's get some ogres. Okay, you help out, please. Okay, ogres, come help. Aim there, you aim there. You are gonna get phantom foes over there. Okay, there's more people coming in. Wonderful. Uh, the wind blight is gonna be annoying. Dude, who is casting? I, I don't even see the casts going off. Well, the keeper is dead. Let's focus on the other keeper. You are gonna have to... You can't really disengage right now. So maybe just extra defenses for everybody. Okay, come over here. Okay, so he's back. The keeper, flame blights. The only, the only real danger is the keeper. So as long as we can kill him, that that's fine. Kill the bitch, Jesus! Okay, go over there. There's still a keeper. Okay, so cast this and then hit him. And you can try and knock him down again, please. We have a Sacre Bleu. Like over there. Okay. We did not actually hit the guy I wanted to hit, but he's near death anyway. I got knocked down, but I'm getting up. Yes, I am. Keep focusing on the keeper. Should really not have sent Durant into the middle. How may I? Okay, let's fight. Okay. Taking a lot of damage unnecessarily. I think it's mostly because of the infestation of maggots. 9.4 seconds. Let's suppress this affliction, please. Okay, now we can tank. This guy got charmed. Okay. Go over there. Okay. Come on, Durant. Oh my god, don't die, man. Oh, near death, so you can run away, run away, run away. <laughs> okay, good, good. He still has the infestation of maggots, so he is gonna fall down. Unless I can very quickly cast this. Please. And he's down. Ah, uh, and this is why I hate druids, man. This is why I hate druids. She went down. Oh my god. Please stop. Uh, dudes. Help. Do something. 
get some more ogres here because I need the help. Following your lead. Damn it! You what? Dude, this thing is one-shotting everything. 58 burn damage. Okay. I am still not worried, but. God damn it. Okay. Jesus Christ. Heal. Heal. Uh, shoot. Still alive. This is mostly because they're blowing up. Wow. Okay. Hey. This was a. This was a terrible fight, man. This was a terrible fight. Jesus. The grieving mother wants to talk to me. She's probably gonna <laughs> tell me I did a horrible job here. The other fight was easier than this one, honestly. The heat emanating from this pool threatens to singe the flesh of your face. I didn't even really I... use a lot of spells because I didn't expect this to be hard at all. Live and learn, I guess. Uh, the grieving mother wants to talk to me, but hey. she usually has some very long dialogues and I don't want it to go too far since we are at the one hour mark. I'm gonna leave this dialogue for the next one and my plan is I want to clear out the entire area. Uh, I might rest in between probably and then I'm gonna rest again at the end because we are taking a lot of damage here and we already have one, two, three injured people, which hey. is not very good. Uh, in any case, <laughs> very messy fight, but it's done in our favor. So, as always, thank you so much, guys, for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pillars of Eternity. I hope you guys are enjoying the run. Um, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing for more. There are videos coming out every single day, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.